Alright guys, GK the Trader here. We are back once more, another review with the executions. Today is Thursday, October 12th, 2023. The day before Friday the 13th. <laughs> so, we're here on the daily chart. Today was CPI, obviously. Uh, lots of Lots of intraday choppiness today, but you know me, I'm able to nav navigate through whatever conditions. Uh, my inner circle members for sure know that, but let's just get straight into it here. We're here on the daily time frame. If we do, right away, I'm going to go ahead and take the FIB. I'm going to take our current daily dealing range. You can see that we dipped up into a premium here, into this imbalance check my pre-market analysis from Sunday uh, for the inner circle members uh, this down close candle right here this will be our breaker you see we dipped up into that right there you see these two clean daily highs here you see how we opened swept those those clean highs there and then what do we have on the opposing side we have previous days low here with this small tiny little gap right below it. And then we have fair value being yielded right here at this old new week opening gap from September. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just drop down to the hourly time frame. See how sm small that daily imbalance is. So we open here on CPI. Go ahead and take that opening price there. Make sure I got that accurate. So what do we do? We trade above the opening, clearing the buy side once more within this is the red shaded area. The upper quadrant of that daily for value gap. So right above the midpoint of that for value gap there, up in the upper quadrant, we work that in. We sweep the buy side once more, which is this London high. And then we also, after we swept the previous two days high. So here's Wednesday's high and Tuesday's high. These relatively equal highs. Okay. CPI. Obviously, we don't trade CPI over here. The release. Um, there's going to be a lot of guys out here misleading you thinking you're missing out when you're not they're just getting lucky and I guarantee you the next time they trade it they won't be showing you profits they'll be talking about how they got their ass handed to them so we get that expansion lower aggressive expansion lower after CPI into a discount <clears throat> we eventually took a while but after lunchtime, we finally got that retracement, the meaningful retracement we wanted to see into this hourly imbalance. So after we dipped up into that hourly imbalance, you can see the amazing drop down that we got here, about 40, over 40 handles. What are we targeting? We're targeting discount, previous day's low. And then you see these clean lows in here, these three clean lows now admittedly I did not know if we were gonna get the hoy down there today but we did I was just aiming for previous days low and then we have sell stops below here as well uh, this would be the New York sell stop so people who were thinking that this was gonna be the low set in place and then it's gonna keep going higher I wasn't thinking that but that's where they're gonna have their sell stops at so two targets right there and then what do we have down here We have this relatively large hourly imbalance left behind right here. So if we take our weekly range here, we take the Monday low to the Thursday high, and you can see equilibrium is right there. I, did, I wasn't sure if we were going to get to equilibrium until Friday, but ultimately we got there today. So this will be the main terminus, this discount imbalance with this discount, these discount sell stops resting below here. Remember what I said? on the daily time frame we have this old new week opening gap here and it just so happens that's where we relatively closed at on the day 
So beautiful precision here. That's everything on the hourly time frame that we need to see. Let's go ahead and drop down to the 15 minute time frame. Now right away, what do we have? Once we go up into this hourly imbalance here, this black line, we have a three dryers pattern. So buy stops taken here, buy stops taken here. That's three drives up into what? Well, I'll take your fib right up into an optimal trade entry. Smacks dead in its tracks right here at the 62% retracement level. And three drives into that. So buy side was cleared continuously for those who are trying to short here, short here. They got blown out. <clears throat> now, admittedly, I might have probably got stopped out here if I was trying to trade this uh, and get short because it did look like it was going to go lower at this time, at real time. Uh, if I was trading that, which I know when to trade and when not to trade, so I was not trading it. Uh, definitely would have been stopped there, but ultimately we get up to that 62% retracement level that I wanted us to get to. Whenever you're shorting, you always want to wait. No matter if you miss the move or not, that's going to happen. You're going to miss moves. It happens. You always, not typically you want to wait until we get some type of return just up into equilibrium. You, it's not ideal to be selling short in discounts. Now there are exceptions to every rule, so don't take that you know with everything there's there are some exceptions I'll, I'll I'll say that but if we take our daily range here take the high or take the low to the high you see we dip down into a discount initially and then we return back up into a premium of that range as well so not only are we in a premium of this price swing optimal trade entry we're in a premium of the entire daily range right here and then what happens once we get to that these premium arrays up here we have this order block and we completely shift below that as soon as we get below that opening there that's a change in the state of delivery and we're gonna what what, what does it want to do what's the point of it having a change of the state of delivery what's the point after it does that it's gonna want to seek opposing liquidity so these relative equal lows down here and then previous days low so let me Mark this out so we can see it on the lower time frame so we drop down. And let me mark this up here. So what what's directly below previous day's low? This small little daily imbalance, right? That's this shaded area here. You can go back uh in the video here and look if you need to, but PDL, that'll be previous day's low. And then this would be the intraday New York session. Uh, draw on liquidity right here. So with that, let's go down to the five minute time frame. You see we have our change in the state of delivery here. Three drives pattern higher. And what else did we do? We return back, um, couldn't get my words out there. We return back above the 930 opening right here. And why is this important to me? Why does it matter that we returned above the 930 opening? Because above the 9.30 opening, the same as the New York session, or same as the midnight opening here, the algorithm, yes, the algorithm, where it accumulates its shorts at is above these opening prices here. So take a look at the opening price here, midnight. We trade up here to engineer buy stop, or buy stop liquidity here. And then we take that up take that out here offering price above the midnight opening and then prior to CPI we once again blow out this high offer price above the opening accumulates all these buy stops here accumulates that to then send short orders to the marketplace at the CPI release here <clears throat> so enough said there let's go ahead and go down to the one minute time frame and but before I do that I'm going to go back to the 15 minute time frame and then I'm going to flip the NASDAQ. Look how different the NASDAQ looks. We have three drives pattern higher into this daily imbalance right here. Intraday we had a three drives pattern up into that. So if you weren't patient and you weren't careful and you pushed too hard, this is 
absolutely a day that people blow their accounts and lose a lot of money. So don't do that. Don't push higher leverage. Be patient. Don't try to be fearful of missing the move. But anyways, if we take this opening price here, midnight, extend it out. Look how many times we accumulated short orders above the um, uh, midnight opening. And then we take the 8.30 opening, we're also above that. So whenever you have this uh, type of scenario playing out, when you're above both openings, and you have proper higher time frame narrative, that means that we're technically overbought. Uh, that's how you can tell if you're overbought or not without an indicator just simply being above both of the opening prices so we had three jars pattern but what else this 830 high was taken out we didn't do that on ES so that would be our SMT divergence smart money technique so the high was taken out we failed to do so on ES and the Dow so that would be our cracking correlation when one average is doing the opposite than the other two in terms of blowing out a high or a low then that would be our SMT divergence and then same thing we have our change in the state of delivery and then I'm going to cover the rest here on ES so let's go ahead and prop down to the one minute time frame if you look back at my execution video right where I went short where did I go short so boom it comes back up into this inversion fair value gap here but what else? Check this blue shaded area. What was that? The very low of the 15 minute order block. So as soon as it bumped into that opening there and this small little one, one minute gap here. Let me go ahead and outline that. It's kind of hard to see now because of how many points we dropped here. But This will be where I went short. That's where the trigger was pulled. And then exiting right below these relative equal lows. So this will be the 10 o'clock and uh, 10 o'clock hour relative equal lows. So those who thought that we had a low in place here and kept trying to buy, buy, buy as I was rising up. This will be where the sell side is residing, those orders. So that's what I was targeting. So I went short here, one contract once again on days like CPI and whatnot, uh, <clears throat> I usually don't use multiple contracts. I only use one contract. And it works well for me and it pays well as well. So, can't complain. Now, the last element I have to bring into play here is time. This is the, uh, if you guys watched my A plus trading setup video, you heard me refer to this as the glue to every trading setup. And that's absolutely what it is because it brings everything together. So right away, I'm just going to go ahead and probably like, what, what's he doing right now? <laughs> I'm just going to put this all the way down here. Clearly, we have a post-lunch macro here going into uh, the 1 p.m. hour, so getting close to that p.m. session time frame. Normally, I wait until 1.30 p.m., but simply too many signatures were just unfolding before my eyes, so uh, I was under the... A, a correct assumption that we were starting the sell program early prior to 1.30. So here we have 12.50 to 1.10 p.m. This is a macro time window. So this would be exiting lunch going to the p.m. session or 1 p.m. When did majority of or the initial down move start? Just, just look at the shaded area. Extend it the whole way out and you can clearly see the only entry I offered was within this macro, right at the order block and the imbalance. Majority of the initial move happened within the macro and took out these intraday sell stops. This is not a coincidence. There's really nothing se more secret. There's no nothing secret about this. There's nothing more really to be said about this macro here, other than, you know, keep an eye on it and see if certain signatures play out within that macro. It's not going to perform every single day, so don't think that. So, yeah, I hope you guys found this one insightful. Hope you got something out of this. If you did, hit the like button for me. And tomorrow, Friday the 13th, I will be live streaming publicly around 9.20 a.m. Maybe earlier. We'll see. But 
yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning then.